I have a group of five to seven guys and I put them through a two hour train the trainer workshop where in essence, they I'm there once a week at this one facility and now they're doing it two to three times uh, in addition to when I'm there and they're leading each other. So you have peer led meditation groups and what we did was in essence pick somebody from each race. So you have all the different races represented. So all the gangs and all the stuff that goes on in prison, which is it's real and it's it's not necessarily safe. You get all of them trained to lead meditation. So at least during that hour, you have 40 guys sitting in there representing each different race and they're leading each other to sit quietly and breathe. And I'm telling you, if it was ever, you, know, you can't film, it's incredible. You know, if, if there was ever going to be a documentary or a film that I would want to see, it would be watching these guys lead 40 other men in prison in meditation. It's the most incredible, silent, beautiful thing I've ever seen. How long is their training in order to be able to lead? It? I did it for two hours. I condensed kind of a five hour training into two hours. And these are people that have been through it already like I've already most of them have been that. sitting with me for a period of time whether it's anywhere from a month to a year or something like that but again like i said if i can train cross how to lead meditation uh you can do it with anybody they just follow the script and that was who i had uh, tr it translated into spanish for because some of them are more comfortable leading it in spanish it you know it means more to them to hear it in, in their own native language so uh, i had them lead it in spanish i had to translate it and i brought back the next week uh to lead in spanish but having them lead each other is extremely powerful because a lot of them these are the same groups of people that on the outside they're not okay with and that they're kind so of at war with cross coaching each other yes. or it's not so it's not just it's, one particular group all on their no, own. No, they are all together, all forty of them from all different races leading each other in meditation, one person leading the rest. It's incredible. Awesome. Yes. How often do you do that? Uh, I'm there every week and then they have it, I believe, on the schedule two or three additional times a week. So they're, they're doing meditation every day. three to four times uh, a week scheduled on the calendar. And if you're doing it that many times, you're probably doing it by yourself yes. all day long. Exactly. There, And that's the idea is to create the habit, not whether you're in prison or out, that's a big part. And I know we'll talk about that, but creating the habit. Yeah, we're Absolutely. talking about that now. Yeah. So for those of us that you know are going to go through life without getting thrown in jail before right. we learn how to meditate, <laughs> right? You know, Hopefully, I suggest yeah, that. Yes. Let's, let's try that. <laughs> um, how does that person get started in meditating and really grasp the whole concept of it? We don't have. I'm not sitting in a jail cell all right. day, only focused on that. We don't right. have every all light thrown at us. So yes. how do we get started? Did you brush your teeth today? I did. Yesterday? I did. Tomorrow? Sometimes, Most likely. Yeah, Sometimes. Right. Oh, oh, Once oh, in a while, oh, you oh, forget. Oh, right. Oh, every day we brush your teeth. Why do we do it every day? So, to the dentist. What do you mean? so you don't have to go to the dentist, take care of it. Your breath doesn't stink, right? It's a habit. Absolutely. So since we were a, you know, a small child, somebody's had brushed your teeth every single day, right? It becomes a habit. Now here we are, 30, 40, whatever years old, and creating time to take care of our mental, emotional health, take care of our mind and do a meditation is not a habit. So what I always tell people to create a habit is do this every day for three weeks. There's an old Stephen Covey quote. He would say, uh, uh, um, it takes three weeks to create a habit. So what I tell people is do this every morning, five minutes for three weeks. Get up in the morning, right? Now, I'm not talking about laying in bed and hitting snooze for five more minutes and calling that your meditation, right? Because a lot of people do that. Get up in the morning, splash water on your face, brush your teeth, get your coffee, whatever you got to do. Wake up and then find a quiet place to sit. If you don't have a quiet place, find a noisy place to sit. Sit in a chair, close your eyes, and just take breaths for five minutes. Put it on your calendar, set it in your phone, have it pop up as a reminder, right? We take but then, five, but then put down your phone. But then put down your phone and don't stare at the phone, right? But we sit there all the time looking at our phone, right? Combing our hair, figuring out what clothes we're going to wear, brushing our teeth. We do all these things. Yeah, like I want a, I want a meditation app on my phone or something. Give me a meditation. Right. Me a and, and there are a lot out there. I mean, there are a bunch of meditation apps out there. And, and I, they can be wonderful. What I'm always afraid of is that people spend so much time you know, looking at the apps and Googling meditation and spending hours and hours reading where if you just sit quietly for three to five minutes, It'll have a it'll make a, a long term difference, but the habit is most important. So I tell people do it every day for three weeks, and then take a week off. And the reason I say take a week off is why do you think? So you can feel the difference. You can see the difference, yeah. right? And if all of a sudden you're calm for three weeks straight, and the next thing you know you're screaming, angry, stressed out more so than usual, that's a lot of times that motivation. You have to have some self awareness though. I exactly. For sure, when we're dieting or on our plan, and you get off for a week, you feel different. you feel it. But it's the, the same question thing. is, are you going to get back on it or are you just going to go back to what you were when you were five years old? And, right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot right. of, you know, I know um, Oscar's not one to get off of the plan, not even for a minute. And I know part of it is because he doesn't want to have to go down that road. He doesn't have to think about it. He's yes. just going to stick to the plan all the time. It's discipline. It's a tremendous amount of discipline that, that we have in many areas. But unfortunately, we've let our minds go for so long without really knowing how to take care of it that we become, it's like being stressed out and angry is just something we're used to. 
We're just used to it. Yeah, it's life. Like, you don't it's just life. I don't know I'm just stressed out. I'm just angry. I'll find something to deal with it to take away my aggression, to take away, you know, take away my anger, to calm down. So we're always looking for things after the fact. But that's why I say brushing the teeth. We don't wait till our teeth fall out to start brushing them. You don't wait till your car breaks down to, you know, change the oil. It's maintenance. And so for me, meditation is a daily maintenance, five minutes in the morning. If you have trouble sleeping, do it five minutes at night. But create that habit, put it on your phone, have it pop up as a reminder, in five minutes, just sit and breathe. And you, we, we laughed about Cross being able to do it. But right. I'm telling you right now, you put that kind of stuff in a five-year-old's head, he will hold you to it. Right. We're, we go, I, I was grabbing a soda yesterday, and he goes, what are you doing? What right. do you mean, what am I doing? He goes, you have a competition. I go, what are you talking about? Did I got a soda? It's like, put the soda. It's like, you put me and me put my soda down. Right, he knows. And I was like, all right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he'll hold you accountable. He knows nothing yes. different. So you teach five-year-old by the time you know i just want you know for us to break these habits absolutely yes. but for us to break our habits so we can teach our five-year-olds not to have these habits when they're 30 and if you yeah exactly if you teach them now i mean no three-year-old likes brushing their teeth really you know kids don't usually get so excited and they're but like yes they, i get to brush my but teeth but once they get used to it they get used to it and they know it's it's just been ingrained in their way of life and that's to me when you look at future generations of meditation is getting the three, four, five-year-olds, even if it's with 30 seconds at nighttime to sit when you're putting them to bed, reading them a book, whatever you're doing, your nighttime routine, get them to sit and close their eyes and put their hands on their belly and just breathe for five seconds. So you're starting to condition them to know that it's okay to slow down and take care of their breath and watch their breath. And, you, and you want to feel good about social change, go talk to some kids. I mean, we go to um, elementary school to work out with them. Right. And you can tell, like, sometimes you get fed up with grownups that just don't want to listen to you <laughs> right. anymore. So you're like, okay. <laughs> I'll reach out to some, some, some young guy to <laughs> right. see if that works. So one of my questions was, um, who's meditation for? But yeah. I guess the, the scale here is... It's, it's random, anybody. But. I mean, even just through the meditation initiative, sitting with elementary school, middle school, high school, you know, the prisons, the military folks, the corporate world, uh, sitting with, you know, senior centers, anybody. Uh, anyone that's human, <laughs> alive, breathing, means you're dealing with stress, anger, and anxiety, and sadness, and depression. So if you're dealing with those things, then meditation can help you. And how do we shift that perception of meditation, or has it already been shifted? To the I point think now? it's it's shift. It, we're we're seeing it right, right now. Right now, it's like the yogi Buddha. It's right. You know what I'm saying? Like and that's kind of, you know, I don't want it to be a fad. That's my fear. You know, I see it both sides. I love that it's all over the place and it's the cool, hip, trendy, you know, fad. But a lot of those things die out, and I don't want this to be something that dies out, right? Brushing your teeth didn't die out. Yeah, because there's we're some, still doing it. Let's do some the science behind meditation then, because sure. the reason why brushing your teeth isn't gone away is because if you don't, your teeth. Three fall. out of four dentists, you know, <laughs> right, or and something the, like and the that. Fourth one, whatever. Yeah, he's from DJ. <laughs> some TV show that was a joke. You know, some, on some TV show, they said something about a joke, and they said, "Yeah, uh, you, you know, the fourth dentist changed their mind or something." So, so even that commercial yeah, right. is ingrained in our heads. Absolutely. But meditation isn't it's not ingrained in our heads and so i think um what were you gonna ask the me? science behind oh the science behind it uh so i'm not a science guy right I'm, i always say i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist i don't study the brain or the heart rate or anything like that You're a smart guy I, but i i just i know what it's like to sit for five minutes and breathe and have anger and, and things like that calm down but if uh, a lot of the work i've done for years is with navy psychiatrists and prison psychiatrists where they are looking at the effects that it has on changing the gray matter in the brain uh, there's a Dr. Richard Davidson, University of Wisconsin. I was a part of one of his studies. Uh, I told my parents, you know, they wired me up for, you know. I saw that the, the picture. Yeah, Facebook, wearing the, uh, wearing the I, net. I, I, I did that after a couple of concussions. They, they threw did that you? Me. Yeah. Um, they found nothing up here with they, me. I don't know me, what they found. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my parents said, so what they find? I said, nothing. There's, there's nothing there. <laughs> but what they do is, you know, they're, they're, they're in the process right now of, of bringing it into the mainstream. And so to bring it into the mainstream, they, of course, want to show the science behind it and that it does change neural pathways in the brain and it does help with, um, the gray matter changing and, and so that's why working with uh, prison psychiatrists as well as the military psychiatrists with PTSD and traumatic brain injuries all the science is there and it'll just continue to be there uh, which will help some of the skeptics that feel that it's you know not okay to meditate it'll help them be comfortable meditating but if we have to resort to me and the Pope sitting and doing meditation then let's let's yeah, do this, it this might be yes. a pessimistic view but is it one of those things where there has to be money in it in order for there to be in the next big push right so that's again my fear is that a big part of the research just means that all of these whatever organizations can get behind it and say yes let's do it and then it's going to be the next you know trillion dollar industry and I, again I have mixed views on that if somebody pays a thousand dollars for meditation it doesn't mean the meditation is bad but for me, it's free, and that's why obviously why we don't charge, and it's always free. I just want everybody to meditate, but if you pay for it, it doesn't mean it's bad or wrong. Just realize you didn't need to pay $500 to go sit and breathe 
<laughs> for 20 minutes. <laughs> you can, hopefully you can do that on your <laughs> you own. You can do that on your yeah. own. But that's, yeah. the, but that's the thing, though, is that is that parallel where if there isn't that money in it, right. it's going to have to, if it's alleviating people of these stresses where they don't have to take these pills, the pills. and they have to do all these kind of things, right. then there's going to have to be a fill for it. Otherwise, there's not going to be that push behind Right. It. I mean, we used to joke about, you know, you go to the doctor, you get a prescription for something, you have a pill bottle, and it says, you know, three take you know two to three times uh, a day or as needed. So we used to joke about having a little pill bottle with a couple, I don't know, M&Ms or something in there that says meditation two to three times daily or as needed. And so hopefully it doesn't become a bigger business than it already is, that hopefully it'll stay free. Uh, but again, if you know, if it's gonna, if, I'm just saying, don't be, don't, don't push that aside because at least if it is gonna be a big business, it's probably gonna push other things out. Which Correct, is and it means people are doing it. So that's why I used to be, I think, more critical of the money behind it, uh, you know, and people paying all this stuff. But like I said, if somebody's paying to go to a meditation, at least they're doing the meditation, and then hopefully from that they can stop paying for it and just do it on their own. Makes sense. Yeah. Good stuff, Slot. Uh, Jeff Slotnick with us today, founder of Meditation Initiative. When we get back, we'll be discussing more and also how to cultivate those good habits of meditating and how you can bring them into your daily life. You've been listening to <laughs> the Core Hour on ESPN Radio. We got LaVon Bogan.